when we have water of crystallization, we have a hydrated salt. So for example, you might have something like magnesium sulfate, MgSO4, dot XH2O. Okay, so we have that water of crystallization. The X essentially just means we don't know how much water is in there. Now, what I can do then is I can take myself an evaporating basin. And into that evaporating basin, I could add some of my salt. So I'll add my salt in here in green. And I'll just highlight that so we know that's our magnesium sulfate. And then I have my water, which is chemically bonded into that. So we'll highlight the thing here, the water in blue, to show that it's chemically bonded in there. Now, <clears throat> if I was to take that and I was to heat that up, what would happen is, as I heat that, the water is going to rise up, okay? Um, and of course, if it rises up, it'll disappear and it'll evaporate off. The problem is, is that if I was to heat that for maybe only like five minutes, might only some of the water comes off, I might have to heat it and wet it and heat it and wet it and heat the constant mass to make sure all of it has evaporated away. Now, that will give me several things. First of all, the first thing that I want to get is, at the very start, I will have a mass of the evaporating basin, the mass of the salt, and the mass of the water. At the end, once the water is evaporated away, I will have the mass of the evaporating basin and the mass of my salt. I can use these masses to calculate the empirical formula of the water of crystallization. Now to start with, we'll make it a little bit more simple. What we'll do is we will just look at um, a salt without any evaporating basin. So let's say I have a salt such as copper sulfate. And the salt is hydrated. So I don't know uh, what my value of water of crystallization is. If I was to heat that up, then I'd be left with my anhydrous salt, which is just the copper sulfate, and I'd be left with an amount of water. Now, let's say I start off with 250 grams of my hydrated salt, and after heating, I have 160 grams of copper sulfate. I can then work out that if I started with 250 grams of both my copper sulfate and my water, then I must have lost 90 grams of water to get to this 160. So whenever we were looking at our empirical formula calculations at the start of this topic, we would have worked out the number of moles of each element but this time we want to work out a number of moles of the anhydrous salt part, so the copper sulfate, and the number of moles of our water part. So my moles is my mass divided by my MR. So in this case, that's going to be 160 divided by 160, which is the MR of my copper sulfate. So that's going to equal 1. And for my water, it is 90 divided by the MR of water. And the MR of water is 18, which is equal to 5. So what that tells me is my copper sulfate is in a 1 to 5 ratio. So therefore, my formula for my copper sulfate must be CuSO4 dot 5 H2O. Now... If we go back then to the practical application of this, sometimes in a question you could be given a lot more information like there is in this one here. Now this actually just needs broken down to get the same two mass measurements as you had before. So we need to get to the point where we have the mass of the anhydrous salt and the mass of the hydrated salt. So First of all, we have the mass of the evaporating basin. So an empty evaporating basin weighs 200, sorry, it weighs 
0.73 grams. So here's my empty evaporating basin at 12.73 grams. The next mass I have is the mass of my evaporating basin and my hydrated magnesium sulfate. So if I think about that visually, here is my evaporating basin. Here is my magnesium sulfate, which is in green. And I'm also going to add into that my water over the top. Now, all of that, those three things have a mass then of 13.96 grams. Then I have these three other masses. Mass after 5 minutes, mass after 10 minutes, mass after 13 minutes. So after heating it for 5 minutes, I lose some mass. I go down 13.96 to 13.56. That tells me that some of the water has been evaporated. But after heating for 10 minutes, it goes down even further, so some more water has been left. So this is telling me not all the water has escaped. It's only until I get the same mass again do I know that all the water has evaporated for it to give me a mass of 13.33. But what is that mass? Well, that mass is my evaporating basin and my magnesium sulfate, because all my water is now evaporated away. So that in total means that I have a mass of 13.33 grams. So to get my mass of my anhydrous magnesium sulfate, so I want just the green, I would have to take away the mass of the evaporating basin. But I have the mass of the evaporating basin here, so that's okay. So the mass of my magnesium sulfate would be 13.33 minus 12.73. The other mass that I need is the mass of just my water. If I want just my water, I have to take away the mass of the magnesium sulfate and the mass of my evaporating basin. I have both these values here. So there's my magnesium sulfate and my magnesium, sorry, my evaporating basin. So if I want just the mass of my water, I'll do 13.96 minus 13.33. So that then gives me a mass of my magnesium sulfate equal to 0 0.6. And it gives me a mass of water as a mass of... 0 0.63 grams. So I want to now find the moles of each of these. And once I find the moles of magnesium sulfate and the moles of water, I find the ratio of those two to get me my final formula.